Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and today is Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. As we count down to the new year, we are facing the sad reality that we are in year two of this pandemic. Despite the politics, this virus doesn't know tribes, it doesn't know boundaries, it doesn't know divisions, and quite frankly, it has the upper hand right now. So what I thought I would do today is review what I've learned about the SARS-CoV-2 virus and COVID-19 illness and this pandemic in 2020. All right, folks, so this is a RNA virus. It belongs to the coronavirus, coronavirus family, the largest of the known RNA viruses. It has these spikes on its outer viral surface with receptors that bind to our human cells at our receptors, which are called the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2 receptor. All human beings have the same ACE2 receptor, irrespective of age, race, or gender. The genetic makeup of this virus is known, and there are more than 4,000 mutations documented in the spike protein alone since when this virus was first sequenced. This virus causes differences in disease incidence and severity. And that seems to be an environmental and immune factor uh, difference based upon the actual virus and its ability to bind to the human receptor. The virus causes much more severe disease and higher mortality in men than in women. And the reasons for this are poorly understood. Now the clinical spectrum of this virus is called COVID-19 and it varies from asymptomatic to mild forms of illness, to clinical conditions that are severe, characterized by respiratory failure, multi-organ and systemic uh, manifestations such as septic shock, sepsis, and multi-organ dysfunction. Experts say that for 70% of people, the disease is either asymptomatic or very mild, while in the remaining 30%, there is much more serious illness. It seems that for most people who go on to develop serious illness, it occurs in the second week. Now, people at all ages who have pre-existing conditions, especially cardiovascular, diabetes, respiratory, and cancer are at very high risk for serious disease. Now, how is this disease diagnosed in many parts of the world that don't have testing capabilities it's clinically based upon their symptoms, fever, loss of smell, and a positive exposure history to the virus. In Western countries, it's the PCR test, which is the gold standard. And now more rapid tests are available, which are useful if positive, but you can still have the infection and test negative with many of these rapid tests. The role of serologic, that's blood-related antibody testing, remains investigational. Now treatment. Oxygen therapy is a mainstay for people with pneumonia. The only approved antiviral treatment at this time is remdesivir, and it has to be given at a certain window during the illness to be effective. Other treatments are investigational and in clinical trials. They include monoclonal antibodies, uh, but they have to be given at a certain time when the virus is replicating. Now, the steroid dexamethasone appears to help in severe life-threatening cases. Now, again, many people are able to be treated at home, and in these cases, treatment is supportive. It's important to drink plenty of fluids to stay hydrated with electrolytes like Pedialyte or Gatorade, it's important to use medications to cut the fever, like acetaminophen. It's important to keep moving as much as possible and to posturally drain the lungs by laying on your side or laying on your stomach to avoid fluid in the base of the lungs. We now have two vaccines approved for emergency use here in the United States, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine. The AstraZeneca vaccine was just approved in the United Kingdom for use there. 
Across the world, vaccine supplies are limited and deployment of these vaccines are prioritized to high risk populations. Full vaccination in the United States is likely to take most of next year, 2021. Full vaccination around the world is expected to take much longer. There are many more vaccines in the pipeline and, and in clinical trials. Now, during this pandemic, it's important to have adequate nutrient intake to keep the immune system working optimally. And many uh, physicians advise the use of zinc, vitamin B complex, vitamins, vitamin C and D because of their complex roles in the immune system and inflammatory process. The evidence isn't solid or airtight, but the common sense approach recommended is supplementation of these nutrients makes sense. Do check with your personal physician for dosage recommendations. Now, prevention, prevention, prevention is the only strategy we have right now besides vaccines to limit the spread of this virus. The virus is spread via droplets, contact, and airborne. So prevention involves breaking the opportunity for the virus to enter our bodies this way. So we all know by now that we have to wash our hands, wear a mask, maintain a physical distance more than six feet away from people outside our homes. We all know that we should avoid crowded places, particularly that are indoors. And wear eye protection if we have a high risk occupation or if we have to be in crowds. Now this pandemic has created so much chaos and so many spillover effects in the economy, for our children's education, for uh, the politics, it's created a lot of problems. And one of the most adverse effects on humans has been mental health. And right now experts are saying one of the most severe effects is loneliness due to isolation. Mental health experts say that there is a heightened risk of uh, mortality from loneliness, and that equals the same effect of smoking 15 cigarettes a day or being an alcoholic and exceeds the health risk associated with obesity. This COVID-19 pandemic has pushed loneliness for many people and studies have shown that 18 to 24 year olds here in the United States are the loneliest group. So parents, if you have a young adult between the ages of 18 to 24, please stay connected to them, these 18 to 24 year olds during this pandemic. So as we ring in the new year, reach out to somebody who may be alone and connect with them. Let's all try harder to survive this pandemic's effects, mental as well as physical, one person at a time, one life at a time. Stay safe, folks. My views are my own. This is Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and have a blessed day.